Hello and welcome back to another quick calculus session with D Dijkstra here. All right, so check it out. Today we are talking about Rolle's theorem. All right, let's talk about Rolle's theorem for a minute, all right? Here's the theorem. It says that let f be continuous on the closed interval from A to B. So a closed interval from A to B. Just a little bit. All right, now, on the op and differentiable on the open interval of A to B. All right, well, what, what's the difference between open and closed? Well, a closed interval is when we have numbers that we can find inclusive of our x values, okay? So we're going to look at numbers that are inclusive of that. Then, uh, open interval is their exclusive. So meaning I can go up to those numbers, but I can't use those numbers. And so we want to make sure that it is continuous from those two numbers, right, all the way, and that it is also differentiable between those. Because at those numbers, we don't necessarily need the, the differentiation of those two numbers, but everywhere in between we do. Okay, so that's kind of the, the difference between that. A, B. If a, f of A, is equal to f of B. Well, what is f of A? It is the y value of the function with A input, right? So the function with respect to A. What is the y value doing at A? If that is equal to some other function of B, then there is at least, at least one C in A, B, that such that f of c is equal to zero. Well, what is f prime of c? Excuse me, f prime of c. What is f prime of c? f prime of c is the derivative, right? The derivative of the function at that c value. What is happening for those things? All right, so now that we know some of the background of it, let's take a look at a picture. So here we have a graph, and it's a function, and it's continuous. And what we're looking for is two values where the y's are exactly the same. So on this graph, we can see that here they both, at a and b, a and b, they both have the same exact y value because they cross the x-axis. And what the theorem states is if there are two y values that are the same, then there must be some c value in there somewhere in between that yields us a derivative of zero. Now, a derivative of zero, if you recall, is just a flat line. It's horizontal. The slope is horizontal or zero. So remember, a to b in brackets is inclusive. a to b in parentheses is exclusive. All right, so now it looks like this function meets the demands, so that's cool. Now let's look at a real example. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's well, do this. I did this with the class the other day, and that is, can you draw two dots, right, on a, on a line, right, a horizontal line? And they can be far apart if they want, or they can be close, far away. And try and draw a curve or a line that connects those two dots that would not yield some type of derivative where it's zero. I challenge you to do that. Pause the video, put me to the side for a second, and then try and draw that line. Now, we, we know that if you draw a straight line, then you're going to get a derivative of zero. So that's not differentiable, right? So uh, it would be continuous, but not differentiable. So two of the three things are met. So try and draw something where you can't connect. We did in class, and some people came up with some fairly creative uh, uh, drawings. But anyway, all right, here we go. Example number one, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared. And the directions say, find all the values of c, uh, of c on the interval negative 2 to 2, such that f, pri f prime of c equals 0. So we have to go through the list and ask ourselves, one, is the function continuous? Well, we should know that all polynomials are continuous. 
If you do run into a rational function, unless we closely restrict the x values, then we may run into an issue where we have a, um, a discontinuity, all right? So because we have asymptotes and we have other things that are maybe whole, a slant asymptote, a vertical or horizontal asymptote. So those are uh, a little more tricky. Now, we also have some root functions that may uh, cause an issue because uh, there are a, a, is a point on a root function that the function just stops because it becomes undefined. Negatives under radicals, are, we can't have. So at those values of x, uh, they're outside the domain. So that means it's restricted. So is this a polynomial? Yes, it is. So yes is the answer to our question here. Is the function differentiable? Yes, it is. Since it's a continuous function and it's polynomial, we know that it is differentiable. I can take the derivative of it. So here's what we do next. We double check and make sure is f of a equal to f of b. Well, f of negative 2 is equal to 8, and f of 2 is equal to 8 for our function. So yes, that checks. So the three things that were in the theorem, if they, uh, they work out, and so yes, we're good. So then we, so we go ahead and solve for the zeros. Not the zeros, but the, uh, where the first derivative is 0. Take the first derivative, 4x cubed minus 4x. We can set it equal to 0. We factor out a 4x. We notice that inside is left at x squared minus 1, which is a difference of two squares. Then I will set 4x as a factor equal to 0. And then these two factors, x plus 1 and x minus 1, those equal to 0. And so the three uh, c values that we get are x equals 0, x equal 1, and x equal negative 1. All right, so there you go. I'm D. Dijkstra, and this has been your Calculus Minute on Rolls Theorem. Thanks. Have a great night.